Hello everyone and welcome to China Observer. I am Coco. Today we will talk about China chip story. Against the backdrop of a global chip shortage, major chip companies have expanded their investments. The Chinese Communist Party have invested huge amounts of money into the industry in order to gain a dominant position in the global chip industry. This is akin to the Great Leap Forward movement in the Mao era. During which many Chinese people donated their pots and pans to make iron and steel. Now companies and local officials around China have launched a Great Leap Forward campaign to make chips, and a nationwide chip making craze is sweeping the country. However, it seems that this campaign has not only brought out an investment bubble, but also a large number of bad projects. Intel in the U.S. recently announced its IDM 2.0 strategy to expand its wafer fab operations. Taiwan's TSMC, one of the world's top three semiconductor manufacturers, recently announced a U.S. 100 billion investment, which will be used to expand global production capacity over the next three years. This is in order to support customer demand. TSMC's unique three nanometer process started a risky trial production in March and has delivered a small quantities, and this has gone better than expected. According to the industry assessment, TSMC will be far ahead of Samsung in Korea, and Intel in the U.S. over the next decade, allowing it to maintain its leading position. Some people may ask why China, the world's second largest economy, is not capable of making chips. What makes tiny Taiwan more successful than China at this? The Chinese government has invested trillions of dollars into the chip industry, and as of July last year, more than forty-five thousand chip-related companies have been registered in China. This is far ahead of other countries, and thus definitely ranks China as the world's number one. Over 4,600 new companies that were registered in the second quarter, which is more than the double of the amount registered over the same period during the previous year. However, according to Chinese official media reports, over the last year, a total of six semiconductor plants worth tens of billions of dollars each have been left incomplete or stopped. This includes the Jiangsu, Sichuan, Hubei, Guizhou, and Shanxi province. The Chinese Communist Party claims that a socialist country has the advantage of a system that allows it to use the power of the whole country to have people and money. Though it is possible to concentrate all the power on one thing, why is it that you cannot make such a small chip? The division of labor in the semiconductor industry is extremely fine, but can be roughly divided into four major segments. These are design, fabrication, assembly, and testing. The entire chip manufacturing process involves more than 50 disciplines, and it requires thousands of processes to successfully squeeze billions of transistors on a chip. At present, no country in the world can manufacture a chip independently. Making the chips that's required for the core equipment is difficult. In this example, the Netherlands ASML is the world's only company capable of producing a high-end extreme ultraviolet lithography machine. However, ASML can't produce them all by themselves. Out of its 17 core suppliers, more than half are based in United States, Germany, Sweden, and etc. This Dutch company spent 20 years to develop the lithography. But they now rely on a network of up to 5,000 suppliers. Many of these suppliers are monopolists in their own field. For example, the optical systems of ASML lithography machine are made by Germany's Zeiss monopoly. Laser technology is owned by Arsimer Technologies in San Diego, whereas a French company provides the key valves. Other parts, such as the cleaning fluid optical, are from Japan. In the field of developing software, the United States is still in a dominant position. Out of the current three major chip designers in the world, the United States accounts for two. These are the Synopsys and Cadence design systems. 
with the third being Metric Graphics, which is owned by Siemens that's based in Germany. Although the United States still has a dominant chip manufacturing industry, it is important to remember that no single country can make chips independently, and the United States is no different. As the chip industry unites the world's most advanced technology, the lack of any one of the key technologies will lead to the entire global semiconductor industry chain being broken. According to the buy and buy mentality of the Chinese Communist Party, it is better to buy than to make, and to rent than to buy. Can China buy this equipment and materials? The answer is no. Western countries have always had the embargo policy against communist countries, including the armaments and advanced technology products. By 1996, there was a Wasnar Agreement with the 42 participating countries from Europe, America, and Asia. This agreement stipulates that all member countries control the export of their technologies, and China has been included in the list of governing countries. In December 2019, a new version of the Wasana Agreement was announced, where they expanded the scope of control to include additional semiconductor manufacturing technologies that can be converted to military use. This photolithography technology is also covered by the Wasana Agreement. This agreement is considered a collective action by all member countries to impose strict multilateral export controls on equipment needed to produce advanced chips. Since the major equipment suppliers of the global semiconductor industry are located in countries that have joined the Wasana Agreement, China has no access to the most advanced equipment and core technologies due to the agreement. The information on SMIC's official website shows that the 32 nanometer lithography they bought in 2015 was still made by the ASML in 2010. Five years into the semiconductor industry, it will have been upgraded many times. The U.S. Department of Commerce announced last October that six emerging technologies, each of which is closely related to chip manufacturing. Were included in the regulations governing export under the Wasana Agreement. The six technologies are completely blocked to China. If this is the case, why does the top echelon of Chinese Communist Party still spend large amount of money on the Great Leap Forward and towards the chip manufacturing? This is due to the following reasons. The Chinese Communist Party wants to achieve the dominance in the global chip industry, and due to their assumption that the semiconductor industry is just like any other industry, they believe it can be won by capital and copying. Their technological thinking has been stuck inside a secret recipe, and they think all that's required is to poach a few so-called leaders, such as Qian Shishun and now Chang Shanyi. The former key figures in the TSMC's process technology, who was later poached by SMIC with the incentive a huge salary, having a leader, a few drawings, a few secret recipe, and a group of people that can solve the problem, you may be able to steal the individual technology, overall scientific basis, and the entire modernization of the scientific thinking, but it's difficult to steal the creative thinking. The Chinese Communist Party's official dumb is corrupted, and officials are promoted via fake political achievements. Some companies that lack of experience, technology, and technical talents have been able to join the semiconductor industry. Local officials do not know enough about the knowledge, technology, and the development rules of the industry, and hold traditional industry thinking of investment and fundraising. Causing them blindly launch special projects. China Economic Weekly reported that Industry Insider revealed that even construction, clothing, cement, seafood, and auto parts also switch. This is due to the fact that as long as your scope of business is related to chips, you can get local tax reductions or financing. This leads to many companies attempting to participate in projects related to chips. When in reality, many just want to cheat on funding. 
Wuhan Hongxing, known as China's largest chip scam, was an investment of 128 billion yuan that claimed to have the first domestic high-end lithography machine, which is capable of producing seven nanometer chips like ASML, with semiconductor industry bigwig Chiang Shan Yi in charge of the chip project. It was all established less than three years, but the plan was not completed and thus failed. Guangdong Haixin Integrated Circuit Co. was only established in March last year and has since invested a huge amount of money in the IC 12-inch wafer project. It plans to produce 500,000 chips a year. The production line has not yet been entirely completed, and according to the Chinese financial media, it has been completely shut down and deemed a failure. Jiangsu Zhongjing Aerospace Semiconductor Co. had a total investment of 12 billion yuan in 2017. It covered an area of approximately 703 acres and achieved an annual output value of 12.5 billion yuan after completion as planned. However, it has since disappeared after half a year of the construction. HIDM in Huaying District. Jiangsu Province once aspired to be the first in China, the second in the world, and become a major semiconductor manufacturer like Samsung. In 2016, the company invested 45 billion yuan, of which 12 billion was invested in the first phase. It covered an area of 257 acres and planned to build a 12-inch CIS wafer fab with an annual production capacity of 240,000 wafers. In recent years, rumors about HIDM suspension, failed projects, unpaid wages, and even bankruptcy has continued to come out. Others are Chengdu Global Foundries, Shanxi Kuntak. And Tsinghua Uni Group, which has also been famously breaking news recently, the projects are just the tip of the iceberg regarding China's chip chaos. People nowadays still find absurd and ridiculous to mention the nationwide iron and steel production campaign and the great leap forward, but the 2.0 version is now being happening in China. Let's talk about Taiwan. Taiwan has recently been described by many major international media as the most important place in the world. Why is this? In the past, the world's main strategic resources are probably two: the first is the dollar, and the second is oil. However, now the chip has become the most important strategic material in the 21st century. This is because we're now in the world of computers, the world of network. And the future is the world of AI. All of this relies on the chip. The chip is the brain of the modern industry, but also the heart of modern society. The United States can control the dollar, the ocean, and oil, but it can't control the chip. Taiwan semiconductors have now reached the top of the world in all three fields. In other words, two thirds of all the world's most advanced chips. Are coming from Taiwan, most of which are produced by TSMC. TSMC is now far ahead of other countries in the technology of chips manufacturing, along with Samsung. According to the statistic from the second quarter of 2020, four of the world's top 10 semiconductor foundries are Taiwan-based companies. Six of the world's top 10 OSAT companies are in Taiwan. Among the world's top 10 IC design companies, Taiwan is also in the top three on the list. Taiwan occupies the world's leading position in high-tech manufacturing. Why is that Taiwan, with the population of only 24 million, can make chips and become the most important place in the world, especially when compared to the CCP, is crazy about making chips but has failed all over the place. They share the same ancestors and nationality, but different political systems have brought about huge differences. Taiwan deserves to be the hope of the Chinese, which proves that the Chinese society can certainly engage in democracy and is fully capable of becoming a modern and developed country.
Taiwan's present foreshadows a picture and provides a template of China's future democratization. Taiwan's success will inspire more Chinese people to pursue freedom and democracy. This small chip alone reflects the deep-rooted problems of the system on both sides of Taiwan Strait. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.